In today's video, we're sorting out the infamous kitchen corner. Again. After that, we're going to have a good old clean, make it lovely and cosy. And we're going to pull the table out for dinner for the first time since last year. Now, I am so embarrassed that the kitchen corner's cluttered again. And I'm probably going to sound like such a whinger here, but I actually had the biggest cry about it a few days ago. Because it is just so frustrating. You saw how hard I worked to clear the corner from all the presents and the new toys just after Christmas. It took me around five days to sort through it all. And suddenly there's now more stuff that we need to find homes for. It's just so exhausting and overwhelming. Those of you who know me know I find it hard to keep on top of things at the best of times. And I really am trying so hard to maintain some semblance of order. But for me to do that, there needs to be a minimal amount of things. Things are my Achilles heel. But yeah, as you know, I've been putting so much effort into decluttering recently. Decluttering toys, decluttering clothes, decluttering the cupboards. And for the last few weeks, I've been staring at this corner feeling utterly defeated. So for some context as to how this happened, it turned out, after I found homes for all of the toys in December, that there was actually a bunch more that we'd left at Charlie's parents. And Charlie brought it all home a few weeks ago and I just couldn't face it. It just felt like, oh my god, we are back to square one within a few months. I actually can't deal with this. It's also Rudy's birthday coming up very soon. But I've decided to stop feeling sorry for myself now. I've put my organisation hat on once again and I've got it sorted. Now this is not me being ungrateful in the slightest. I say it in so many of my decluttering videos that we are in such a privileged position to have our children be so loved and gifted with so many fab things. My mum and Charlie's mum spoil the boys rotten as do a lot of other family members. But there's just too much stuff. We don't have a big enough home for everything. And I don't want to spend my life in a constant cycle of trying to make decluttering decisions. And then right when I feel like we've cut everything back to a decent amount and found places for everything. It's someone's birthday or it's Christmas and we have an influx of new things that we just don't have room for. I feel like at the start of every year, I spend months just trying to catch up. And I also feel very strongly that children do better with less things. I remember when I was a child at birthdays or Christmas, there'd be a few select things that I was so excited to get. And when I did get it, I'd obsess over it for the longest time. There was one year I'd found a Furby in the Argos catalogue. Back when the Argos catalogue was the best thing in the world. And I got it for Christmas and I was so happy I'd take it everywhere with me. I honestly don't think I've ever seen either of my children love a toy as much as I loved that Furby. And I think it's because nowadays children get so much stuff that they don't even remember what they've actually got. And that surely can't be good for development. Last Christmas I was watching the kids open their presents and not necessarily my youngest but my eldest. He was barely taking the time to look at what he'd opened. It was just like unwrap, wow and cast it aside for the next one. It actually made me feel nauseous, not only because I worry about their little brains, but just the thought of the children that would give anything for just one of those gifts. So I think what we're going to try and do next year is ask our parents to limit the toys to two max, and then maybe see if there are experiences they could gift, like vouchers for days at the theme park or the zoo. I always worry so much how that request will come across, though, as controlling or ungrateful. Obviously, I'd never want anyone to feel offended or hurt, but I cannot keep going on like this every year. It is seriously affecting my mental health. There's no room in the attic. The kids' drawers are overflowing again. There is no room anywhere. Anyway, we actually got rid of Mushroom's crate in the hopes that we wouldn't stash stuff on top of it. But as you saw, it did not stop the habit. In fact, it made it worse. Because once the pile started, we then started stashing coats and bags and all sorts on top of it. But we're putting a stop to it today. And I'm going to transform this kitchen into a welcoming space where we can all sit together around the table again. And just a space I actually feel happy to walk into. I feel like I deserve that. We all do. Just wiping the bin with Zaflora here because it always makes the room smell absolutely amazing. But yeah. Charlie was off work so I had him working hard behind the scenes, finding spaces for all the toys and putting things back into their rightful homes. And I cannot tell you how much relief I feel now. 
I can't wait to show you the final result and all the before and afters. Anyway, I do apologise for my Mardi moment there. For those of you who aren't from the East Midlands, Mardi kind of means sulking. I've had a sulk on. I've had a few of them moments the last few weeks. This little rant about clutter and one about mean comments in the last video. I think that one though was partly to do with the fact that I've actually started taking Facebook a bit more seriously and posting there, so I've opened myself up to a lot more hate. <laughs> Facebook is savage, but just takes some adjusting to. By the way, if you want to differentiate between the fake accounts and my real one, all of my social media accounts are linked here. Anyway, the rest of my mardiness is down to hormones. I am just very easily overwhelmed and upset at the minute. It won't last, it never does. But I feel like YouTube especially is my safe place to talk about it all. The good times and the not so good times. The times I feel strong and put together and the times I feel a bit fragile. And I hope maybe my being vulnerable in that way helps others feel less alone in their feelings. So yeah, whilst Charlie was finding homes for everything, I was cleaning. And while you watch me get that done, I want to tell you about two more creators that I've been loving this month. Both of them, I believe, deserve so much recognition. The first is a cleaning account that someone actually recommended in the comments here. And her name is Gabrielle Randone. I'm sorry if I've butchered that pronunciation. I'm going to try and tag her in the description. But when she was recommended, I dashed over to check out her videos because I'm always looking for new cleaning creators. Please excuse my face here. I'm absolutely singing my heart out. <laughs> but yeah, I watched one where she was transforming her bathroom. And there was one specific bit where she said she hadn't ordered enough lino for the floor. And I thought, that's something I'd do. And then she had to stick some of it down with blue tack. And I thought, OK, this woman is right up my alley. <laughs> Remember when I had to stick baubles on the Christmas tree with dental floss? <laughs> Resourceful is what that is. But yeah, I was like, this is definitely a woman after my own heart. I've got to recommend her. So if you haven't found her already and you're looking for a new channel to watch, definitely go check her out. And the next channel is another self-development channel. Because I always like to recommend one cleaning channel and one self-development channel. And this one's called House of Hybrations. And I actually found her, I think her name's Bobby, when I was on my break at work. I always like to watch self-development YouTube right before work and when I'm on my break, just to get me in a good headspace to get me through the shift. And one particular video of hers was actually being recommended to me for a few weeks before I decided to click on it. Eventually I thought, why not? This video is obviously on my feed for a reason. So I sat there and watched it at work with my little ready meal and I loved it. She talks all about the law of attraction and discusses getting into a manifestation mindset. And in the first video I watched, she was speaking affirmations. I'm not particularly a fan of affirmations. I'm more of a visualisation girl. But the energy she put into these affirmations when she was saying them, it was so empowering. It was great. She's got a fab vibe and a special ability to lift your mood. So I definitely recommend House of Hybrations if you're wanting to get into a positive, hopeful mindset. Speaking of getting yourself into a better headspace, I want to start making a habit of eating at the table again together as a family. Because the table's always so cluttered, we've been eating in front of the telly every evening for I don't know how long. And while I don't think there's anything wrong with that, I think it's lovely to watch a movie with dinner every now and again. It's not something I want to do all the time, maybe once a week. I'd much prefer to sit together and socialise properly and chat about the day. Life is so busy and chances to connect with your loved ones are becoming rarer each year, I think. I just feel like time's moving so fast and my kids are morphing in front of my eyes. And I want to look back and know I've taken the time to be present and appreciate every wonderful age and stage especially while they still actually want to sit and talk to me, although I hope that never stops. So moving forward, I want to make sure that the table's consistently clear so that we're able to do that. Setting food at the table makes me feel like I have my life together too, even though it's such a simple thing. Well, you'd think it was simple. It's actually a mammoth task for me. It's similar to making the bed in the morning. They're just little things that make a huge difference in your day. And they might not be big things to people who are consistent and organised. But for someone like me who really struggles in forming and sticking to routine and habits, being able to stick to these things is a massive accomplishment. And they're habits I can build upon too. So yeah, I finished this clean feeling so positive. I'd nipped to the shop and got myself some beautiful spring flowers, tulips and daffodils. 
I love having flowers in the kitchen, but I never get them because the kitchen surfaces are rarely clear for long. And the flowers end up making the place look even more chaotic. But I'm hoping every time I look at them, it encourages me to pick something up as I'm walking in or out. As you know, I'm not a pick-up-as-you-go person. I need things that trigger me to remember. So the other day I was thinking, maybe I can make some signs to put around the house or on every door. Like, oi, don't put it down, put it away. Might help, eh? Try not to judge my flower arranging skills too harshly, by the way. I needed my mum here or my best friend, Abby. They both create the most beautiful flower arrangements. It's something I'd love to take the time to practice. One day. Anyway, I'm making beef ragu and cheesy garlic bread. Something to warm the cockles. You can't go wrong with pasta in this house. And then after we've eaten that and I've cleared up all the pots, which I'm not going to show you in this video, we've done enough pot washing for one day. But in a minute, I'm going to show you the before and afters. So please let me know what you think of the transformation. And before I go, I just wanted to tell you all how much I appreciate you. I had so many lovely comments on my last video and I always feel so guilty when I can't reply to them all. But just know how much you all lifted my spirits and how grateful I am for each and every one of you here.